Hi, you guys. Just a quick reminder that if you are somebody who loves the occult, you like learning about the occult, hearing stories about the occult, we have an amazing panel over on Gnostic TV. Now, this panel went live a couple of weeks ago in October of 2024, but it is ongoing. And as you will hear in this episode, there are even more testimonials and stories added to this panel. We have so many guests on this panel that talk about their experiences growing up in these particular religious families. Tickets are still on sale. They will be ongoing. There's This is going to be an ongoing thing. And once you have a ticket, you're welcome to watch this panel as many times as you like for more information or to purchase your tickets there's a link down in the description box below but before we get into the episode i am going to go ahead and play play a commercial about this uh, this panel um again it went it went live a couple of weeks ago but it is ongoing so sit back relax enjoy this commercial and then i hope you enjoy this episode i really enjoyed this episode this was a very fascinating conversation and i cannot wait to hear your thoughts on this conversation this episode today hello everybody if you are a fan of the occult especially the darker side of the occult if you like learning about the stuff that is done in the shadows boy do we have an event for you we want to welcome you to Tales of Survival from the Dark Side. Wow, what a lineup of speakers we have. I've had the privilege of meeting incredible survivors on my channel, uh, Aquarius Rising Africa, over the past four years. And it's been an amazing journey for me to bring them over and just share with more new people sharing their stories now guys this is going event is going to be held over on gnostic tv and Indeed. tickets are, are now on sale they're 50 percent off right shanti so we have a link yeah. below um and also if you want to watch the full trailer of the event which cannot be shown on youtube you can hop over to gnostic tv and watch that trailer as well we're looking to release this panel live on gnostic tv on friday october the 11th at 11 a.m. Eastern time. So Tickets are 50% off. And yeah. once, you, once you've bought your ticket, you can watch as many shows as you want and you can watch them as many times as you want. Support our survivors. They deserve to be heard. And there's nothing better, more healing for a survivor, for a survivor than to be told, I believe you. So thank you guys. Um, if you have any questions, please make sure to ask Shanti or me down in the comment section, be section below. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you guys over on Gnostic TV. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. I'm joined here today with my buddy Hillis for our next installment on this crazy deep dive into hidden history. Yeah. Cosmic forces of Mew. <laughs> This is part five. Run! Uh, this is part five. When I'm putting ten fingers up, this is part five. It's part um, five. Part time five. Two. <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, it, 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 it's probably part ten. So if you include all of yours, plus if you guys bounce over to my YouTube channel, you'll see that I've been doing uh, content and videos about the sacred symbols. And yeah, breaking yeah. those down. So I have right now I'm up to eight, uh, about seven, eight minute videos. Yeah, and you've been doing that about on the TikTok video or the symbols. Too, right? Yeah. Huh? You've been doing that on TikTok too, right? Yeah, I've been posting them on TikTok too. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. Um, I'm just pulling it up. My computer is being really slow. Of course, all of these links, as always, will be down in the description box below but i'm going to go ahead and show you just <laughs> because visual it helps here is hillis's channel 
So again, all of this will be down in the description box below, you guys, because Hillis, I'm the co-pilot of this. Hillis is the pilot because he's the one that's done the bulk of the research into this. And so here, oh, here's all the symbols, you guys. So you can either check all this out on his YouTube channel or over on TikTok. So yeah. I feel, Hillis, like for us older people, we're, we're getting the TikTok, aren't we? It's a little difficult. Yeah, I mean, I, I like it, you know. Uh, I don't like to do it first thing in the morning. Sometimes I like to break it up, watch like in the middle of the day to break up my day, you know? Yeah. But I'm not one of those people who's on social media. Like, I got to be on it for an, at least an hour. No, give me about 10, 20 minutes, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Although I do get stuck. I do. I have been getting stuck. Okay. I, my new favorite obsession, my favorite TV show is this show called From, F R O M. It's, oh yeah, I saw you talking about that. Yeah, I get stuck on rabbit holes. Um, the people, the, the the fans of the show are called Frumily, and they're so the Frumily of people around the world watching this show. It's a it's a great show. Like it is, I can't ever remember this actor's name, and I know from one of my professors I had in college that when you can't remember an actor's name, it's actually a good sign because they're so good at their craft that you see the character. <laughs> It's the black yeah. guy that was in Lost. He plays the main character. In oh, this I've never called... watched that show either. Well, the problem with Lost, okay, the problem with Lost is that they started creating the show without an ending. So the <laughs> first three seasons of Lost were fantastic, but then it was like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. You could tell they didn't know where to take it. And so people were really disappointed. So the main character, the guy who plays Boyd Stevens, said in one of the interviews that he asked the guys, because they knew him from Lost, like, do you have this figured out? Like we can't. <laughs> and they were like, yes. like being here on planet Earth. Do you have it figured out? No, we're no. just going as we go. But with this, we learn from our mistakes, and so they they actually do have an ending. And so it's kind of like you in the sense that these there's a lot of mysteries in it, and the acting is superb. Like it is very much care like Lost. It's a it's a small yeah. intimate cast. It's these people that get stuck on a road. They're, it's all over the United States. The, they don't know each other. They're on a road trip. They get off at a random exit. And then all of a sudden they pull off. They see a tree that's fallen down. And they end up in this town that they can't leave. So they're oh. all stuck in this town. They can't leave. And not only that, but monsters come out at night. Like black-eyed children type monsters and like eat them. So there's that aspect oh. to it. Well, and there's all these references to like Talisman and um, there's a lot of Edgar Allan Poe references. There is Viking uh, mythology references. There's Inuit and Native American mythology references. So there's a lot of that symbols that they're finding over the mystery of what is this place? What's happened here? Why can't we get out? And the biggest mystery of all is they, the first episode, they said something brought us all here. Like how are we all connected when we don't even know each other? So I would definitely, I don't know why that brought that up, but uh, oh, TikTok, <laughs> TikTok. I get yeah. stuck on the from rabbit hole because people have all these theories about what it is. And so I get stuck. So I'll be on TikTok, like listening to all these people's theories. But if you want to watch it, guys, it is on Amazon here in the United States. I don't know what other countries. It's MGM Plus. Um, they have two and a half seasons out. So you can binge, binge watch the first two seasons. And we're halfway through season three right now. Um, I've <laughs> gone back and watched it twice because you miss so much the first time because you're like, but then you go back What's and watch it. Yeah. You can see, like, because you see in the set design, they put things that you miss the first time. So, anyway, yeah. they're like Mew, right? Like, these people are human yeah, beings it, that don't know what the hell's going on. And we're finding at, in this great awakening that we're like, well, shit, our history's wrong, everything wrong. You know, yeah. we got to rediscover this. So, <laughs> yeah. No, but it's fascinating. It's fascinating that you were talking about shows and the season two of Ancient Apocalypse is out. I don't know if you saw. Oh yes, that. we watched it. We watched it. Yes. Yeah. I haven't finished it. I, I'm taking my time with it, and and I got to and I got to episode two, and for me, this is just validation of the book, The Lost Continent of Mood by James Church, Church, uh, Churchwood. Yes. Churchwood. Sorry. Sure. And so the reason for that is, so if you guys go back to part two where Bust and I was talking about this, you can even hop over to my channel where I talk about some of the sacred symbols because it's very important to understand this. Because, you know, they were talking about the burning of certain sections of the Amazon. Yes, and how yes. It revealed, and how it revealed sacred geometry. Yes. And 
it was right there along the path. So anyone, so just a, as a recap, anyone who left the island of Mu were called Mayans, okay? And if you go back through to the path to which they traveled to the west, they traveled through the Amazon, and they had many settlements along the along the Amazon River till they made it out uh, up to Atlantis. And along their path, they have these, and, it, and it's shown in uh, ancient apocalypse to where they have these giant square and circular uh, mounds in the Amazons. And I'm like, there's proof right there yeah. that this was 70,000 years ago and how these people traveled and settled even down and there's there's other episodes where they go into this even more but to me that just solidified what James Church Wall was talking about and I'm watching this and, and don't spoil this for me because I haven't seen the ending yet but it, in, in the back of my head it's like I'm looting that Graham gets to move and he talks about this because he even talks about Rapa Nui you know Easter Island to where that was the part of Mu at one point. So there's there's this indigenous culture and, and just this amazing information that's coming through confirming everything that we talked about so far. So maybe we, we should bring Jessica back on and, and go a little bit deeper. With it, so. We can for sure, but I will say that part, I think I'm not giving it away, but that part of Ancient Apocalypse, you guys, is 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 breathtaking. Because we think about like they were burning the Amazon, like that's not good. But then all of a sudden yeah. they noticed that whatever the devil will make for bad, God will use for good. That it revealed these crazy, it's almost, it almost looks like crop circles, but they're not crop circles. They're no, not, they're like not just, a, just like yeah. a giant square. Then there are Ma some, mounds. but then there's, yeah, square mounds. But then there's yeah. some that's a square within a square. And then there's some that are circular, and then yeah. there's a square and a circle. So I'm like all these, all these it, things. So just really, and you're not going to notice it unless you're in the air because it's so the way that the the geometry of these shapes is like perfect. So how yeah. were they able to do this? The kind of the question, and it matches a lot of the other strange mounds they found in like the Americas and other, you know. So that get to your point, well, like this was a big major expansion from this particular place. So that's why it's very similar across right. the world. And when you think about it, I mean, I think it was in part three, well, no, part four, after we did, with, after we had Jessica on and the children that moved, and how they talked about how they had these flying machines, these war machines, and, and all these other devices. I mean, they were not as... Uh, Primitive. Uh, yeah, primitive as we assume them to be. These were very intelligent people that were around 70,000 years ago. And what assisted with this level of intelligence is this, is the cosmic forces of mood. And it's the understanding of the forces that govern not just our planet, not just our solar system, but the entire universe itself. Because... James uh, Churchill even talks about how everything is a cog in a sense, a universal yeah. cog, and how everything has its place, everything has its momentum, and everything has its movement. And it, and when you begin to understand the symbology of the symbols, you begin to understand why everything flows in the direction that it flows, because our universe, our solar system, Everything is moving in a clockwise manner and a spiral. And if you go into the meaning of the spiral, it means going to. So where are we going to? Are we going to source? Yes, because that's essentially what uh, the heretic letter H stands for, especially when we talk about the primary forces, and we'll get into that much later. But I want to talk about some of the standouts from the book, The Cosmic Forces of Mood beginning with our planet. And it's just fascinating in how the misconceptions of science has really inundated society with their beliefs because, you know, in, in paraphrasing here, you know, scientists may have just gotten lazy. <laughs> and, yeah, and want well, I to, think money, you know, when, when they say scientists, 99% of scientists will agree with who's ever funding them. 
Yeah, that too. And, and so I uh, first want to talk about what the forces here on the planet are. We know about the elemental forces. We know about the, those those particular energies, but people often talk about gravity, mm -hmm. but people don't talk about the statistical force. People don't talk about the magnetic force. Mm -hmm. People don't talk about these other energies, these other imposing energies, because, you know, and, and magnetic forces mostly. And I feel that, you know, science has uh, glute magnetic force and centrifugal force and turned it into gravity because how so we, you know, yeah. uh, here, how we here on this planet when you have a planet that's moving, you know, 40 miles, well, no, I forget, like 1,000 something miles per hour. Yeah. So that's in itself is centrifugal force. Yeah. So if you guys ever had a spending time when you were a kid, you know, just to break it down, that's the energy of centrifugal force. When you have something that's spinning so rapidly, or even the teacup rise at an amusement yeah. park, or the, what's the ride where the four drops? I was just thinking that, like, back when they tried to kill us when we were kids. <laughs> I mean, they yeah. would, could you imagine today with all the kids, this would never fly today. No. So young people watching... When we were kids, there was this ride at the fair where you would there, you weren't seat belted in. It was like nope. cushions, and it would start. You stood in your little spot, and it would start spinning. And it would spin so fast that it would push you, hold you against the wall, and like lift you up, and the floor would drop. I mean, but, yeah. exactly. And all these rides, all these things have one thing in common: they all move clockwise. Yeah. They're all moving out the same direction. So that just mimics the energy of the universe. Well, and I will say, too, while we're on this, for you guys who ever have studied, like, traditional yoga or tra using the body, like, movement for, for, for spirituality, we work with that centrifugal force. We work with all these different things in the movement of the body as well. And so I love you bringing this up because as above, so below, right? Like, as... Exactly. as at, as outside as with inside and ayurveda tells us that you can only be as pure your insides can only be as pure as your outside so your body is constantly trying to find that balance with its nature around it and uh -huh. so we see this now with the forces that even though science is telling us one thing the body and the earth are going to always behave in the way that they know how to behave to balance itself with the forces Exactly, because we often are told one thing, but when you allow yourself to open up to research new information, you find out other things, such as me going through this book in particular, where we, where I personally begin to understand how one thing affects another. But I knew this on an energy level, knew this on a spiritual level because of the work that I do. Yeah. And when yeah. you have the science uh, behind it, or some people may call it pseudoscience, I don't care. You know, it's there. It's, there's proof in this book to show what is possible, what is what is in fact true. And one of the things that stood out to me when we are in these movements of understanding the magnetic forces, especially magnetic forces, because magnetic force is is one of the driving forces of everything. Yeah, the magnetic yeah. force on the planet, magnetic force of our heart, of our energy fields, all these magnetic forces. And one of the things that we often think about is the Taurus field, how it moves up, out, down, and back. So this is the same thing that's happening at planet Earth in the magnetic field, in the magnetic force. This is the same thing that's happening to us in our body. The same thing that's, that is repeated throughout the universe in the celestial body. And when we have this magnetic force, you know, moving throughout the Taurus field, what is it doing? What is the purpose of this magnetic field? The purpose of this is a form of release and replenish. Release and replenish. It's a cycle that we go through. And if you ever even look at the flower of life, mm -hmm. it's in this, in, in the flower of life, is a Taurus field in itself, where it's constantly in a state of replenish, and I'm sorry, in a constant state of release and replenish, release and replenish. And so, the reason why I bring this up is because, yeah. <laughs>
Y'all can see that. I knew it was. I knew I had it in here somewhere. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And the reason why I bring it up is because one of the things that that I found most fascinating. I know I keep be overusing that word because it's screw it is yeah. fascinating. It's interesting. Yeah. And so there's been this thought about how the sun, this giant, you know, mass uh, in our solar system, this giant energy ball that is governing our system and how it and how it heats the planet and how the sun does this, how the sun does that. And I read this book and received new information. I was like, this is amazing. And the new information that I received is that the sun is not doing anything except pulling out, extracting the energies that are already present in Mother Earth herself. Uh, and I had to pause and, and think about that for a moment. because That makes sense to me. I'll tell you why in a minute, but go ahead. Yeah, and so the reason why I had to pause and think about it, because growing up, you were always told and always taught that the sun does this, and the sun provides what the sun does, the sun does that. And I'm like, okay, well, yeah. And then James even goes on in his book to further say that this is the furthest thing from the truth. Because of two simple things. In spring and in fall is when the sun is at the closest to the earth. So why isn't it warmer in the right. spring and fall? Well, some people say, you know, have an Indian summers. Now, and I had to pause the thing about saying, yeah, that would make sense because at this time, it is in preparation because of the rays, the heat heat rays, and the invisible energy, and the additional rays. I can't think of at this moment, but get the book, read it, you'll find out for yourself that the energy is being drawn out through magnetic forces because the Earth stores up energy mm -hmm. through its bedrock, through its multiple layers of Earth. And so it stores this energy up until it's time to be released. And the trigger for that release is the magnetic energy from the sun, where it draws this energy out to warm the planet for Mother Earth to do what she needs to do. Which is why, you know, when dinosaurs existed, you know, we had this tropical and subtropical environment where it was still in the process of moving, shifting, you know, doing what she needed to do to have us here on the planet, us humans. And it's just mind-boggling to know of such great transformation. And there's one point I want to get to, but I'll let you say why this is fascinating, because this next part is going to blow people's well, and that, because I'm always thinking at in terms of my training, which is in traditional yoga and looking at the body, not just as a functioning na nature machine, but as a, an, an intelligent life force of energetic, of energetic body, which for those, we, we look at energetic body and physical body, energetic body is not what you really see, but it's also directing the physical yeah. Yeah. and our solar plexus. So if your solar plexus are right between like right where your rib cage makes a V your solar plexus are right that right there. And that's the third chakra called Manipura. It's yellow. And that is considered the sun of the body. So when we think about the body holding energy, just like you were saying, the earth, like when you talk about the layers of the earth, that's the same thing in the body. We hold energy in our in layers of our skin, in our fascia, in our muscle. And that energy can be anything from food to stress to emotion. And the solar plexus, which is also connected to the digestive system, helps push push the energy out when the energy is not serving us anymore and we do that through sweat we do that through elimination you know sometimes it pushes out through tears but that's coming from the solar plex and center of the body where the sun that's why people say that there is the same amount of like neurons in your stomach as there are in your brain people who have stomach issues often are correlated with people who have depression because there's an intelligence here here that's not analytical like the mind is it just knows what to do 
And so as you're saying that, I'm like, that really makes sense to what the ancient yogis wrote about with the body in this area. That's why you need a strong solar plex because it's, it's, it also stands for your own personal power. But when you're in your own personal power, you're able to eliminate what is not serving you anymore. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I mean, and just think of it this way, we are mimicking as everything is mimicked. You know, there's this, the, the, the divine blueprint that everyone knows everyone talks about. And that's mimicking every celestial body and every yeah. being and everything that is in existence. You know, because our heart, magnetic field, earth, magnetic field, chakras of the earth. We have chakras in our body, yeah. our aura field. There's an aura around the planet. So when you think of these things, it's just, you know, when you want, when you know one thing, you begin to know a lot of another. And one of the things that really shocked me, you know, being spiritual and, and not doing my own research and just believing what everyone else is saying, blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, this, you know, this is like the big thing that's going to happen and this is going to change the planet and everything. And so, and I know you and I even talked about this once where, the magnetic poles begin to shift. Mm -hmm. And so he talks about it in this book. But before I get to that, just wanted to make note too that the reason why everything is magnetic north in the energy field, because you know, everything is magnetic, we have these magnetic energies, is because of the Taurus field, because the energy is releasing up yeah, out. So this is why, you know, we are magnetic north, which is why everything is moving clockwise. And sometimes things are also moving counterclockwise at the same time. So it's the let, letting it's the letting go and replenishing of the energies and the cycles. So everything is cyclical in that sense. And so when James talked about the shifting of the poles, when the cooling of the earth, now this happened multiple times on the time of the development of the earth. And the last time this happened was around the time of the dinosaurs. Yeah. Which gave it, you know, the subtropical, the temperatures began to drop. Everything was cooling even more, which they could not sustain life. And people have these theories that it was a big meteor that came and destroyed them. No. It was because the temperatures were cooling, everything was changing on planet Earth, and they couldn't, and, th and those lower temperatures could not sustain their life for their well being. And so people talk about these meteors, these craters that happened on planet Earth. No, it was because of the gas belts that were erupting, creating mountains, creating all of these different land masses after Ice Age. Yeah. But when you have all of this energy stored up, because that's essentially what happened during the Ice Age, all this energy began to be stored, 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 stored. And so then when temperatures began to you know, shift and warm up and then everything began to move, you know, from south to north, shifting the poles yet again, that everything warmed up and all, and so you had to, the Earth got rid of all the stored energy through volcanic action. Yeah. So it wasn't meteors that hit the planet. It was the all, our own rocks and, and everything. Earth detoxing. Exactly. It's like I have too much energy stored up. I got to release it all that and do something else with it. And so she created something magical with yeah. it. And so people talk about the poles shifting again. The poles are not going to shift again ever. Ever. So right here in this book. You can believe me. You can't believe me. Because the thing is, I say that because it makes perfect sense because we are finally in harmony to a degree to where nothing to, on that level needs to shift. Because can you imagine the catastrophe that would happen if the pulse physically... Oh, I don't think any of us would survive it. I think that would be... No, good. none of us would because, none of, because, because we're ignorant. Yeah. But, but we're arrogant. Yes. Is it, and isn't that, that's what I was thinking actually uh, when I was thinking about nature and how we look at these patterns in nature and nature just accepts these patterns. Like the trees don't fight when their leaves fall off. They don't fight it. They let them go. It's human yeah. in our intellect that causes us to think that we somehow 
can can control control the nature and that's but, but nature knows it can't because it, it, it's coming from a different type of cosmic plan and that's that you know in, in literature we know man versus nature like when you're using literate like writing a story nature will always have to win like man can never win against nature nature will no. always have to win you know exactly, because we are nature we are yeah. part of nature we come from nature and so when you step into this space of truly understanding that this cycle is consistent the cycle is constant so there is no physical shifting of this part of this pole energy what is happening is the energetic shift the energetic mindset of what could occur because i mean when you think about the northern and southern hemisphere in our mind you know it, in 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 my thinking and rationale, this makes perfect sense. It's balance and harmony. Northern hemisphere, everything moves clockwise. Okay. Southern hemisphere, everything is moving counterclockwise. So when we so every and so the equator is the fine line. The yeah. Print, so everything is balanced. You, because when you having the energy go up and out, it is uh, moving away. Yeah. And I know, and I know this is counterintuitive, but follow me. So you have northern hemisphere just moving clockwise in the spiral fashion. It always means moving towards, mm -hmm. and so, and then the southern hemisphere is moving counterclockwise, which is always moving from. But when you have the Taurus energy involved, the flower of life, even though everything is moving up and out is moving away from yeah so which is which is ejecting that energy out and even though everything's supposed to be moving clockwise in the north but it's still moving that southern energy out right so as it moves the southern energy out it replenishes itself and it attracts the energy back in meaning that we're moving toward so it's the natural balance of we moving away from and coming back to so it's that the natural flow of replenishing of the energy and it's you know it's common sense well, i shouldn't say common sense it's it makes sense when you start to see the patterns and begin to understand the symbols and begin to understand where everything comes from and that's what i'm asking people here to do today is to not just take someone's words for it because the day of taking people's words for it is gone Oh, I mean, oh. granted, you know, I've, you know, read a lot and relied on a lot of information from this, but from my own intuitive, my own space of doing the work that I've been doing for about 10, 12 years, longer than that now, through, you know, my writings and studies and things like that, it, it just, be, things begin to fall into place where you understand the cycles of that, you know? Well, and I, you know, that's an interesting thing you bring up, Hillis, because I get that question a lot, like, how do you research? Because I think that people have forgotten how to research. And yeah, basically, thanks to like, Google. Exactly. Now it's just like Google, Dr. Google, paging Dr. Google. And you research by looking at so many different perspectives, even perspectives you don't agree with. And for me, I find the commonality or what makes sense. And, and, and that's kind of, I think people, so when you're saying like, yes, I read this book, if you're saying, you know, this is a book too, but you've also looked at all these other things as well. And so you've seen the patterns, what James Church was is saying makes sense. It resonates because you already understand the patterns from other, from studying spirituality and studying other things in life. And so, you know, for, I think, again, I think people, I mean, I've said this before, Hillis, like back in our day. When we had to go write a research paper, we had to go to the damn library and go on a scavenger hunt to find the books. Like we had to go to the Dewey Decimal System, find the book, hope it was as gonna much be as we hated doing it too. You know, it's like, oh man, I gotta go to the library, and then and then sometimes you would ask your friend, "Do you have the the D Encyclopedia? Do you have the letter D Encyclopedia?" All had encyclopedias, Britannica. So you you had to look through all these back when we were young. We didn't have the Doctor Google. We didn't have the internet so we had to look through all of these different sources inside our sources and i think now because people it's so easy just to google something and the first thing that pops up people think is accurate when that's not that just means they paid more to have their research put up first you know yeah, so exactly it, 
I think for the younger generation, I mean, I still know how to read a map, you know, like we lived without, although I did see a funny, a funny meme where someone was like, so before you had internet and you would ask like your, your aunt a question or your uncle a question or mom a question, and they just told you something, were they lying to you? Or like half the time they were, they didn't know the answer. They just made something up. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And you know, it, it's just the beauty of how all of this really comes together. Yeah. But what I want to move into now is something that really got me excited about reading this particular book. And um, I was just reminded of one thing that I wanted to share, but maybe it's not important to share at this time. Um, but first, I wanted to read this to you. And I want to talk about the life force energy. Okay. So if you guys follow my videos, about the symbols of movement. I just put this one up uh, over the weekend, so you guys go check that out. Where I talk a little about it a little bit more, but I'm gonna go into a little bit more depth here and reading actually uh, the part of the chapter from it. And so it says here, the life or vital force. This is a vignette from the Naruto writings, a four pointed star called Calhoun. This word is comprised of uh, two vocal vocab vocab. Two vocabs of the mother tongue, ka meaning four, and hun meaning therefore in one. And what I've learned in reading and studying Mu, especially when it comes to the square, especially when it comes to anything that's, uh, oh, darn it, I don't have it in front of me, anything that comes to anything that's four pointed and I wish I, I don't have it in front of me, but in the uh, sacred symbols of moon, and I talk about it in my video that I just posted, the uh, heretic letter H that is also stands for the primary forces, even in the pillars of Egypt, which then uh, refer to the halls of Animenti, where he talks about the pillars and the four curvings and even, here, not this one, but I have uh, this guy underneath where this is considered one of the pillars. And this is actually a Jedi necklace. D-E, sorry, D-J-E-D-I, Jedi. And that is consistent of life force energy. And the reason why this is so fascinating to me is because uh I actually connected with this two years ago, and I'll show you the symbol that's here in the book. Uh, no, you can't see it. You can't see it. <laughs> there it is. So, and I'll explain a bit this down for you. So, in the center, you have two circles. You have the circle and the dot. And that is just a reinterpretation of creative force energy. And then on the outside of that, you have the four-pointed star. And that is representative of the primary forces, those energies. And then on the outside, you have another symbol, the circle, which is the creative energy. What this says to me, and what I've decided it meant in layman's terms and short terms, meaning that it's Energy is coming from and going back to source energy. Creator life force energy is the replenishment, it's the, un, it's the universal energy and cycle for that. And when I saw that, when I was in the reading, and I said, I drew that, drew that 10, two years ago. And I had to go to my, to my book where I keep all my symbols. And I'm like, I have it, I have it, I know I have it. And then I looked for it. And I thought I had it marked in here, but there it is. When it comes up, no. When it comes up, there. So it's just a, it is a variation of the life force energy, but I drew that two years ago when I deepened my work with what I do with clients. And it is a very potent symbol now that I work with it on a more regular basis. Understanding the true essence, the true meaning of disease or Cahoon, 
meaning the four primary forces and energies. And the four primary forces tend to be, you know, what we will call them, whether it's oh, the points north, south, east, west, whether it is the elemental energies, you know, which is why we need to see elemental energies, earth, air, fire, water, and actually... And the fifth one is always being spirit. And actually, uh, earlier this year, I drew this guy. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Oh, you disappeared. Oh, there you are. There you are. Oh, yeah. 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 So I drew that guy because I was saying that we knew you need a new symbol for elemental energies. And so it's always contained around creative energy. It's always contained in that space. So when you begin to understand the symbols, which is why, you know, when I saw Ancient Apocalypse, I was excited because the simplicity of that and going back to the first book, The Symbols of Mu, the reason why they created it because these symbols was to keep everything simplistic. Yeah. And build upon that simplicity, you know, to make it easy for them to draw, to utilize them for the the 10 million people that inhabited blue at one point for them to have direction, to have them have focus and focus on the deity, you know, and not worship in the terms that we feel as well, that we think worship is, but more so in the terms of reminding them of where they come from. Yeah. I want to show you to you guys, as I, I popped off screen to find this again, to kind of reiterate the pranic energy. Can you see that picture, Hillis, of yes. this pranic mm -hmm. energy? You see how yes. it goes up and down and around, kind of like the Taurus, and then you have the different spinnings. So it is as below, as above, so below. You know, the energy within you is also within the planet as well. So very fascinating. Yeah, I mean, it's like the meridian system, because if you know about the central and governing meridian system, they both travel in both the north and south <laughs> Directions. Yeah, like this. Yeah, a prana, prana. Yeah, exactly. And so, uh, all the meridians are dual because everything that's on your left is also on the right. So it's it's a dual energy system. Not a lot of people talk about that because when you go get acupuncture, go get acupressure. When you learn to study energy the way that I've studied it. It, it, you understand what points affect what. And I'm still learning, you know, about how the different movements of energy and really how the meridians affect anything. Because if my meridians are not working properly, then I can't do the, that work, but what I need to do for a thing. Because when I draw energy in, it is to support and sustain the meridian system. As I draw energy in from the planet, I draw anything, energy in from galactic sources, I draw energy in from wherever I need to draw it in. And then as I draw this energy in, then I move it out through the governing system, through the Kundalini energy, through the contract, wherever I need to move it out of to be of service to someone else. You know, whether, whether or not we are on the astral plane or if I'm in the home, or by locating, whatever it is, it's just really in that space of of the really understanding. And so that particular symbol, the life force energy symbol, it, it just resonates with everything and how, and I, I'm even being reminded that even you know, in the Osirian religion that we talked about in the children of Mu and how Osiris even had his throne where he had the heretic letter H on it. So he was sitting on the energy of life force itself. So we can create, we can recreate these things in our everyday with all this energy and to support us, you know? It's speaking of energy, energy is so forceful. As you were saying that, like back in my early thirties, this might be TMI, but it's it's kind of there's a point to it. I was having some really bad like cramps. And so I went to a Chinese medicine doctor. And um, instead of going to like a regular OBGYN and he was like, ah, simple fix, your uterus is twisted. You, your uterus has twisted itself. And to get my uterus to untwist itself to move, he did acupuncture on my lower belly. And it hurt like hell. Like usually acupuncture, and I, was, I was crying like, and it literally, the whole point of pressing into those, those places, the force mm -hmm. of that energy actually untwisted and moved my uterus. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, that's the beauty of it. When you know where to press, I mean, there was even a point in my life where I would have acupuncture regular, regularly. And this one job I was, you know, consistently writing, loved, loved my job, but there were moments where I had stress. Yeah. And the lady, the acupuncture that I was seeing, you know, I was out of college, but I would see different ones, but I had like one or two that I would see regularly. And she would give me ear seeds. Yeah. So if you know anything about ear seeds, because yep. of the chemical that is, and they're, they're about that big, they're so tiny. And you put like a little band aid and they put them in your ears. Yep. Like in the, in the cartilage of the ear. So whenever I felt stressed, I would press on it because that's also connected to, I forget what meridian is connected to, but it's connected to one of the meridian points. It helps to release this chemical into the body to release the stress. And with anything, you would not think that a particular point affects another point in the body. Absolutely, you know? it does. Yeah. Especially when it comes to my, and this is how I know I, I have too many sweets, is with my kidney meridian, my, and that's in my foot, you mm -hmm. know, when that starts to, when I feel that intense, I'm like, oh, too much chocolate. Because it's either too much, uh, and usually I feel when it's too much of one thing, when my kidneys are doing too much. Uh, yeah. Open. Yeah. So I feel that in my foot. So that's a real sensitive one spot. <laughs> there's a meridian in your wrist too for two things for people who get like car sick they have these like bracelets you can wear that press into parts of your wrist to help you with motion sickness and also if you're ever like really cold like you can't seem to warm up if you put your wrist under hot water just try it yeah. if you get really cold try it well, I don't know if that would be any time too soon. I run hot. And, you know, and, and I have to practice and I have to talk to my teacher because I haven't been practicing as much And when it comes to my telekinesis, one of the things that we have to do is, and I know how to do it, I just haven't practiced one, is we have to emit, you know, practice feeling cold in one hand and then feeling hot. In the other hand. hand. Yeah, or, 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 or just right now, just, you know, alternating between hot and cold in one hand. I can feel hot easily, but it's the cold that I've been having challenges with. And so it's just the whole visualization and say, like, okay, what does the ice cube feel like in my hand? What does... Yeah, uh, and, and, and settling, the things settling into it, accepting it. Yeah, yeah. yeah the things I usually don't feel or touch anything cold. Everything is room temperature. My water is room temperature. You know, whatever, you know, whatever is always room temperature except for when I have ice cream. And I don't have it that often anymore. So it's just recalling upon those energies, those memories to affect everything else. But going back to, to the book, the broader scope is everything affects everything. So we're just a smaller piece in the earth energy as we are in our own cycle of, uh, letting go and replenish, letting go and replenish, which is why, you know, the magnetic energies of the earth, you know, when that energy is released, it affects us, you know, whether yeah. it's hot or cold or not enough energy, it affects us. And then, which is why we feel depleted or energized. Yeah. And then that energy, you know, that's affecting the earth comes from the sun in all its multiple rays of energy, you know, through the magnetic forces coming, you know, millions of miles away that's effect and that is uh, being affected by you know the sun serious you yeah. know which light years away and so when you have all these these chain of events these cogs as james calls them these cogs that are in this energy you know it really brings it to its full fruition of really understanding and you know uh what and I'm saying all of this, and I'm just thinking, it's like, I really would like to talk to that person who was in uh, the Polynesian Islands that commented last time. Yes! we. There was somebody, it was, I can't, I have to go back and look. If you're yeah. watching, you commented, and I, I told Hillis that he had heard stories of Mew as a kid, correct? Was that the comment? Yeah, yeah, that was the comment, and I would really <laughs> love for them to come on, and I really want to you know, talk with them more because there's, you know, when you have actual true linear people 
with this these stories, I, I am fascinated because the, the main reason why I got into studying Mu is because you know I do Lemuria light energy, and yeah. you know there's always been this debate: Lemuria or Mu? What do you call it? Lemuria or Mu? What is it? What is it? What is it? And so I have this giant book that I've started, you know, scrolling through, reading little bits. I was about that thick, probably about five, six hundred pages of all the scroll, the Mormon scrolls. And I've, you know, touched on it. But it's one of those things that when you actually have, you know, first account generational yeah. stories, you know, just like in, in, uh, in the Native American culture. And what I have come to believe in, in, listening to other accounts from the Hopi Indians, you know, what if they were done. Uh, and, and with the most recent stories that I've heard was on Age and Apocalypse. There's also other documentaries and other and through other friends that I know that the Hopi are descendants of Moon. Yeah, that makes sense. I have their well, yeah, it's and the thing is too, like Hillis as American kids were we were we raised knowing about this or hearing stories about this? No. So the just fact, like how, just like the black kids with blonde hair, the Tamil, come on, right? Like the fact that this is like that there are people out there in the world who actually part of their culture were told these stories. I, I yeah, we want to hear like what did you hear growing up? Like that's fascinating because we, I mean, for most Americans, Hillis and I would I would guess to say most Western culture, like in the normie world, they would think we're batshit crazy, wouldn't they? Yeah, I mean, like I said, said, I mean, until I read The Children of Moo, I mean, I wouldn't have imagined, you know, number one, the word Negro comes from 70,000 years ago, you know, and how he described it in, in the book, where there was the Negro and the Negroid, which, and the Negroid was referring to the Indian people, and the Negro was referring to the flat-nosed, brown-skinned yeah. people, which are African-Americans, or Blacks, or Tamils, or whatever you want to call yourselves. I mean, it, it's just fascinating when when you pick up a book, and the thing that's coming to me now is this, is this very hateful uh, quote that I heard years ago, and uh, it was, if you ever want to hide something from a black person, put it in the book. No. Yeah. Who said that? I can't remember. It, it's so long ago. It is so long ago I heard that, but it stuck. WTF. Like that. I'm thinking about like people like Ben Carr, like these crazy. I'm like, do you not know? Like what? No, this, was, this, was, this was before even all of that. I read this. That I heard, read, saw this quote. I'm like, this is so crazy. And obviously, it came from a white person. Obviously, I'm just but, like horrified that somebody said that. Like that is, God, people still still cease to amaze me sometimes. Like, uh, I have it had had this probably at least a decade or so old. Whoever but said I, that I should be ashamed of themselves. Truly, should be ashamed of themselves. Even if they're still living today, but yeah. <laughs> you really should be ashamed of your of yourselves because yeah. I'm a white yeah. person and I know plenty of stupid white people. Like, I mean, come on! Like, stupidity is is not is not selective to a certain race. It's just a breed of people. They are in all races, and yeah. smart people are in all races. I the fact I, I still can't like Hillis. That drives me crazy when people generalize personality types by skin color it's so stupid it's stupid you well, you are an idiot if you believe that well i mean I, and i'm just gonna be frank with you i mean honestly until i read the book i mean i had no idea that i mean i've seen black people with green eyes and hazel eyes and but i've never seen black people with natural blonde hair and blue eyes and dark skin well i had either the, until the last episode i i right. thought blonde hair blue eyes was strictly a european trait yeah, and so when you have all of this, and so, you know, I guess when we're done with the series, because there's one more book. Uh, where are you? There's one more book, and the Force of Cosmic Forces of Mood Part 2, and I'm about a quarter of the way through that one. And so there's pretty much talks about Earth primary forces and then how the mountains and were formed and things of that nature. And I think it's fascinating that we went from, 
you know, the, the symbolization to how the earth was created and how and how it moves. And so, what I, I I'm excited because I can't wait to do a pretty a summary of all of this, you know, because it's just beautiful and how uh, this work was put together. And and I don't know if he's going to watch. I did put it out there, but I contacted Jack Church Ward. It must have been telepathic because I was just thinking that. I know you've been in contact. <laughs> well, you know I'm psychic. Come on. I know. I was thinking that. I was like, should we tell them that you've been in contact? So for the people who are just now tuning into this episode are going to go back and watch the other accents, who's Jack? Who is yeah. he? So Jack is the great, great grandson of James Church Ward. <laughs> Why do I keep saying, I say Church Ward, but it sounds like Church Ward. Uh, yes, yes. Church and and he was the one that basically, for lack of a better word, brought Mew to local or uh, modern day uh, awareness. Yeah. Oh, did we lose you, Helen? Of Mo. Go ahead. You, you pause for a second. So start over again. What you were yeah. saying? Yeah. No. So he even added an addendum to the Lost Continent of Moo, which I haven't read yet, but I'm excited to. He even has his own books out about Moo, and one of them being the Mexican Tablets. And I am excited, and I actually want to show you guys really quick, too, uh, about where is it, the one of the symbols from the Mexican Tablets of Moo. And, ah, yes. So I don't know if you guys wait to look there. So that's one of the Mexican oh I disappeared. There's yeah. one of the Mexican yeah. tablets of move. And the this here, the square, that's the heretic letter H I was referring to earlier, which is in conjunction with the four uh primary forces or life force energy. And then you can see the I that refers to creative consciousness. Yeah. And so there's other ways, there's other definitions in there. But ever since, you know, reading the sacred symbols of Mu, I don't look at the symbols the same anymore. I don't. No. And I'll show you quickly just for you guys. You can see because Jack is the one that he's kind of um, taken over his, his great-great-grandfather's work. And he's actually quite funny, isn't he, Hillis? Because in he some is. of his interviews, he doesn't quite give his opinion but he tells you like antidotes about his family and even even his family thought his great great whatever grandfather was crazy yes. and so the fact that he's picked this up i mean we really have to give him credit for keeping his his this this work alive because i think the family would have just buried it if it wasn't for him that's my opinion anyway yeah and i'm glad i found it and hopefully you know you guys are watching this and hopefully gone out to purchase some of the books to get more information because, you know, being one who is intuitive and, and been doing what I would do for a long time and then having Jessica on the show, there's a lot of validity to this, you know, especially you know, after seeing people like uh, uh, Billy Carson and Graham when they present their work, there's a lot of similarities. You know, granted, I, I love Billy, and you know he talks about Sumerian and texts and Egyptian texts and the Emerald Tablets, but he's missing the big piece, and this is it. This so, is it. and that's the thing too, because we're all just kind of helping each other out along the way, and people, you know, and that's the thing I think we've forgotten too. Hillis is like m maybe not everybody has all the answers, and maybe there's some incorrect answers here and there, but if we work together and bring everything together. Right. We'll have a better a better understanding of where we actually come from than right. um, I mean the first time I ever started challenging the mainstream scientific narrative is because I'm RH negative. And as you guys know on this channel, that was one of the topics that kind of blew my channel up because I started talking more about it. And scientifically speaking, if you look through all these science research papers, there's a big glaring piece of evidence that disproves evolution. That's yeah. the RH negatives. Because if we have RH negatives, there's no connection. The RH stands for rhesus factor. That's the same thing as the rhesus monkey. But if you have people walking this earth like myself that don't have the rhesus factor, 
then that means there's no possible way that we connect. We, we are connected to monkeys. So if I'm not connected to a monkey and I'm a human being, just like Hillis, are you watching and you're RH positive, then you must not either. Like that just seems kind of common sense. And so there's this big glaring piece of evidence that 15% of the world doesn't have this just genetic link. So it must be that the rest of the world, in my opinion, obviously follows that. But the thing is, it's easier to tell people you're an accident. You came from an accident. Yes. You were a monkey because, the, you know, for whatever reason, we saw that with Jessica. Go back and watch that remote viewing with Jessica because there does seem to be, from what, from what I remember she picked up on, there does yeah. seem to be kind of a battle over some of this information right now for, for whatever reason oh. there is. Yeah, I mean, there's always going to be some sort of, uh, I don't want to say war, but lack of a better term, you know, there's going to always be this fight over what's true and what isn't true. But the truth is, the, the truth of the matter is that when you have the land mass uh, almost as big as Australia, an yep. island yep. that is at one point inhabited, you know, 10 million people, you know, and having 10 different tribes in segments of the population. And when you read the story of the origin of these people, and then when you understand the terminology such as Mayans, yeah. and how that was used, and all the different cultures that were talked about in the children of Mu, and then you understand that they were great sea travelers, and so, you, you know, when you have them travel along and then set up colony empires and you have, you know, one of the colonies, you know, Japan, you know, land of the rising sun, you know, which is the telltale sign right there. Yeah. Because yeah. you have the flag with eight, seven rays on it of the sun. And it clearly says, if you look up the 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 flag of Japan, it says, this is the sun of the, you know, this, the, the, the depiction of the flag, the beginning of it, of it being the sun with the eight or seven rays. And it was off to, and the land of Mu was off to the east. And that was where the sun came up every day. So, I mean, it's just in honor of that. And the emperors were always called Mu Ra, meaning they were of the sun. Yeah. So those were, and so every emperor was named Mu-Ra, and every colony empire, they were called something else. But Ra was in the title of the colony empires. So everywhere, so there was Ra always somewhere. Whether if it was in Japan, whether if it was in the Yucatan, whether if it was yeah. in now what is known as Peru, now all the way over to Atlantis. I mean, even if you look into Atlantis and Egypt. They worship the sun. That's a very well known fact. And it is in their crowns and headdresses and in the temples. And, you know, through the Osirian religion, it's just very well known. But where did that come from? Where did that originate? Uh, people always talk about, you know, Samaria or, you know, the, you know, the ancient aliens. But people often forget, you know, about Atlantis because when, uh, Osiris was, gave birth to Thoth, Thoth was going between Egypt and Atlantis to build the civilization back up. And once it was, and so then, you know, once, you know, Atlantis was gone, all was left was Egypt. And so they had all these sacred writings that was up up in, uh, in the Himalayas. Well, it wasn't up in, it was just, you know, over the ridge. This was before mountains existed. So I mean, there's all these explanations that go back to the original source. And when you understand the source material, you begin, you can begin to decipher everything else that follows. There's this YouTuber here on, on YouTube that has this great, she's a researcher as well. She has this great line. She always says to understand the end, we have to go back to the beginning. Yeah. And that's what I keep thinking with this to understand where we are now. We have to go back to the beginning. Yeah. You know? and, and, and that's where we're at. I mean, I'm so, I'm so happy that we're doing this. Yeah. yeah, I'm too. I, I thank you for bringing this to my attention because it's just fascinating. There's that great, the great, great quote: "The more I learn, the less I know. The more I learn, the less I know." And I know some people have a hard time with that, like letting go of of what they've been taught and what they've paid money, their education they paid money for. 
But it's kind of interesting because if everything we've been taught is a lie, then what's the truth? And the truth must be really great. And we're on that exploration right now. So I know I know our audience is enjoying this. We've got some great people here on this channel that are like the esoteric, the mystery, the, uh, you know, learning this stuff. So I cannot wait to hear you guys. And if you were the person, I'm going to say it one more time. If you were the person who left a comment saying that you remember hearing stories about this from your childhood, please reach out to Hillis or me. My email is esotericatlanta at gmail.com. Just put mu or something in the subject line so I see it because I get a lot of emails. Um, Hillis, do you want to just give your email address quickly too? So who they, this person, yeah. could, either one so of us. So mine is my name, Hillis at hillispew.com. Simple, easy enough. And I can put that actually, duh, I can put that in the description box too, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll put both of those. I mean, my channel email is literally my channel at gmail.com, super easy. Um, so I will put both those down in the description box. So if you are that person, or if you're just a person who randomly stumbled upon this chant, this this show, and you're like, wait a minute, I remember my grandma talking about this mysterious Mew. Yeah. It doesn't you just reach out to us because like we didn't hear about this in America. If there are Americans out there that grew up hearing about this and you're not your your last name isn't Church War, <laughs> Church War, I I I wanna know because we didn't know no one taught us this at vacation Bible school. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> so anyway, anything else coming up on your channel soon, Hillis, or just Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. There's a lot of things happening. You know, I should have led with this. <laughs> But in that way, you know, people wouldn't have watched another episode. So uh, there is a live Halloween summit I'm doing. So Halloween uh, day, there's a live summit. So check out my uh, all my links below for details about that. I'm also doing a Miracle Summit on November 14th. Uh, that will be live. And if you are local in the Fort Myers, Naples, Bonita Springs, or, you know, Lee County area. I'm doing a live uh, in-person event, you know, Vibrate to Love, so people can understand the symbiotic relationship between gratitude and the vibrate and the law of vibration. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. I Maybe I can make it down there. I'll have to look at my calendar. Because um, we're, we're down in Florida all the time. Um, yeah, no, gonna... it's November 9th. That oh, was that's, in about a week. That's really soon, yeah. Yeah. We'll feel it up here. <laughs> and also, yeah, it would be guys, nice to meet you in person, too. I know, right? I feel like I've already met you in person, but because we're, we're always talking about I know, I know. Isn't that crazy? Uh, I've yeah. met Jessica in person. Jessica and I have hung out in person. Um, she's exactly the same off camera as she is on camera. But I will say, too, because Hillis is also works with the Gnostic. Um, if you guys want to join, we still have tickets available for the uh, cult panel event that we did. Um, it's ongoing. So even though we aired it, 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 it went live on last month. Or yeah, still in this no, month. earlier this or, is like two weeks ago. Yeah, it went live, but that just means it went live. So it's all there. So you can still get tickets for it. Um, all those links are down below. There are a ton of panels on Gnostic. Oh, and Sandra is available now too. Oh, cool. So there's a new there's two new videos in the in the collection now. Oh, wow. So we have even more. Maybe we'll even get more people. So now, guys, once you purchase a ticket, it's good. Like, you're good with that ticket. So you can go back and, you know, because it's a lot of interviews. So you to sit down and watch them all at once would probably be a lot. <laughs> you know, it's like a full time job. So you can kind of pause it and go back and listen to each episode. And so if you're interested, especially if you're new, like if this video caught your ma your your eye, we're weird on this channel. We're, we're, we're kind of a cult of weirdos. I love it. We love the weird stuff. And so Gnostic TV is another platform that Hillis and I both like, I create content. You, you do some, you work there as well. Like it's this new platform of full of a bunch of weirdos that tell really cool stories about the weird and the wacky and so we do these panels where we have people on a specific subject that have like an expertise in that subject and so um shanti from aquarius rising africa and i put together a panel of people who have survived a cult and not all occult is bad we know that but we're talking about like the dark occult like the the more nefarious and so they have very interesting stories about growing up in these particular families and what they've been through to like leave this particular re religion we'll say we also have people like rocker mike you guys know him he comes up i think he's gonna be coming on my channel in, a, in about a week's time anyway um who ended up learning a lot about the occult 
when he was doing his deep dive into the son of Sam. And so he has had done a huge podcast going through everything within that, that particular case. And so he's also on the panel talking about how, what he learned uh, through his research, he did not grow up in an, in an occult family, but what he's learned since breaking down these world, we'll say world, I have to be careful because we're on YouTube, but like world events that might not be what we think they are, particularly in the Son of Sam case. So anyway, all that information is down below, guys. It's all down below. I have my Esoteric Explorer series, also on Gnostic, as well as the Esoteric Health and Wellness series. So um, yeah, you guys, and, and don't forget, now, Hillis, do you have a backup cha channel on Rumble or anything? No, no. Okay. I, so, please make so sure you, you are subscribed to my backup channel over on Rumble just because I'm a little troublemaker sometimes. So so um, so just to make sure that you're over there and a lot some of the episodes that I'm gonna be dropping in these next uh, few days that involve like current events, wink wink, will have to go over there because YouTube won't allow them. So make sure you are subscribed over there so you get notified for all of those um those episodes. And don't forget to subscribe to all of Hillis's channels, guys. So anyway. All righty. Well, thank you, Hillis. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye.